Okay, let's continue now with looking at a few more polynomial functions and finding the possible rational zeros, the PRZs. This one looks like it's going to be easy. Can you tell why? Uh, well, I think it's going to be easy because the leading coefficient is a 1, so there's no fractions to deal with at all. It turns out it's just going to be the factors of 8. Remember, it's the factors of 8, factors of 8 over factors of 1, which is easy. Okay, so really, we, we just need the factors of 8, which are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. By the rational zeros theorem, these are the, po are the possible rational zeros. And if you needed to go find out which, you know, what the zeros are, you would just test them using the factor theorem. For example, if, just to remind you, if f of 1 equals 0, then 1 is a 0. And x minus 1 is a factor of f. OK, so we did a little more than expected there. Let's uh, do the same thing. Find the possible rational zeros of this polynomial function. So what we have is the factors of 2 on top and the factors of 15 on the bottom. So let's do that first. Let's do like a big, this won't be our final answer, but <clears throat> maybe I'll put a plus or minus out front and I'll put a 1 and a 2 on top because that's the factors of 2. And on the bottom we put the factors of 15, which would be 1, a 3, 5, and 15. So we have to do every single possibility here. So I'm going to start with 1 and put 1 over all of these. So it looks like we would have 1, because, well, let me put plus or minus, plus or minus 1, uh, plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 1 fifth, plus or minus 1 fifteenth. And then we repeat with putting 2 on top and all of these on the bottom. So plus or minus 2, plus or minus 2 thirds, plus or minus 2 fifths, plus or minus 2 over 15. Wow, this one has a lot of them, a lot of possibles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And since it's positive or negative, this is 16 possibilities. So, just to let you know what the actual solution set is, in other words, not just the possible zeros, but the real zeros are negative 1, which we had listed here, negative 1 third, which we had listed here, and positive 2 fifths, which we had listed here. This is the actual solution set, or the actual set of zeros to that function. <clears throat> so f of negative 1 is equal to 0 f of negative one-third is equal to zero, and f of two over five is equal to zero. <clears throat> All right, got one more example to do in this video. Well, this is a little different now. This one says, find all zeros. Okay, so we actually have to come up with a set like this of the actual zeros of this function. All right, well, we're going to use the the rational zero theorem to find out the possible rational zeros, and then we'll use the factor theorem to figure out what's going on. Okay? So, or which one, you know, to pick out the first one. This is just a little hint. Start by finding the, po the possible rational zeros. Use the factum, factor theorem to find the first one. Let's get one that works. The first one is usually the, almost always the toughest. All right, so the leading coefficient is a 1, and the constant term is a negative 20. So because this is a 1, that's nice. All of our rational zeros are going to be integers. So the possible rational zeros 
r plus or minus 1. It's just going to be all the factors of 20. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10, and plus or minus 20. That's the list of all of the possible rational zeros. So we just have to go through these and we'll start with plus and minus one and we'll continue with up to through the big ones until we find our first zero. <clears throat> so let's start with one. What's f of one? It'd be one cubed plus eight times one squared plus 11 times 1, minus 20. Actually, since x is a 1, all you need to do is add the coefficients and see what you get. 1, 8, 11, negative 20. And guess what that is? 0. 1 and 8 is 9. 9, 11 is 20. 20 minus 20. So our very, very first one we checked, we got lucky. So let's, let's make sure we know what that means. f of 1 is 0. So, x minus 1 is a factor of f. x minus 1. We have our first factor. And after we do synthetic division, this x cubed, the result is going to be an x squared, which hopefully we can factor in our heads. Okay, so let's now, let's divide f, this polynomial, by x minus 1 using synthetic division. So what goes in the cup? What number? Positive 1. <clears throat> Positive 1. And then we'll put 1, 8, 11, negative 20. 1, 8, 11, negative 20. And by the way, when I'm done doing the synthetic division, I know that I'm going to get a 0 right here because that's the remainder. That's the remainder term, and I know that f of 1 equals 0. So x1 one minus 1 is absolutely a factor of this. So I know there will be 0 remainder. Okay, so drop the 1 down. 1 times 1 is 1. That gives us 9. 1 times 9 is 9, and 11 and 9 gives us 20. 1 times 20 is 20, and as expected, this remainder is 0. So at this point, what we just determined is that f of x is equal to, do not forget about this factor that we just divided out. It's equal to x minus 1 times this, kind of a sub-polynomial. And remember what we do here? The original was x cubed, so this one's going to start with an x squared. x squared plus 9x plus 20. <clears throat> and if we didn't know how to factor this, we could repeat. We could say, okay, well, let's find the possible rational zeros of this guy. But when you get down to a quadratic, it's easy. You can just plug it into the quadratic formula, but I'm pretty sure that we can factor this in our heads. That would be x minus 1. Now what's this going to be? x and x to get the x squared. Two numbers that multiply together to give me a positive 20 and add up to a positive, so it's going to be a plus and a plus. Uh, 10 and 2 won't work, but 4 and 5 will work. Right? 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 plus 5 is 9. So what were we asked to do? Find all of the zeros. What we've done here is completely factored f. So now to find the zeros, it's very simple. Set that equal to zero, set that equal to zero, set that equal to zero. So the zeros are simply uh, 1, negative 4, negative 5. So be careful when you get problems like this. Uh, sometimes it says just factor the polynomial. Sometimes it says find all the zeros. So if it said find, it basically takes the same number of brain cells. Uh, here's where we did all the factoring. 
and then we computed the zeros. So regardless, you'll have to do the complete factoring even when you just when you need to find the zeros. So the zeros are 1, negative 4, and negative 5.